Thank you. Thank you, ECOT, for a terrific introduction. I consider it a distinct honor to have the privilege to address the graduates of 2013. Mr. Lager, Jess, who prepared that terrific introductory video, Mr. Kern, members of the dais, friends all, and graduates of ECOT 2013. Today is your day. I am so honored to be able to give an address to the largest single class graduation of any high school in the nation. And you should be proud to be that class. But it really is only fair that you understand how I really got here. You see, Mr. Lager called my chambers one day and wondered if I'd be available on June 9th to give a commencement address. I told my assistant, just get the date and the time, and if I can do it, I'll be there. She said, he has to talk to you. I picked up the phone and he said, Your Honor, what do you think about the Constitution? Now understand, I'm not used to answering people's questions about stuff like that. But I said, you know, I took an oath to support the Constitution, so I believe in it. He said, what about the Bill of Rights? I said, well, you know, the Bill of Rights is about freedom of assembly. He said, do you believe in that? I said, yes, I do. He said, what about the other rights of the First Amendment? Then I said, well, you know, it's the Establishment Clause in Religion and freedom of speech. And instantly he said, do you believe in free speech? I said, yes, I do. He said, good, come on out on June 9th to our graduation and give us one. And that's how I got here today. We gather this afternoon to recognize all those who have achieved so much against, in some cases, insurmountable odds. And I'm reminded of the gift given to us by our founding fathers brings us to a day like we have today. It was Thomas Jefferson who authored the Declaration of Independence and expressed that sentiment. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Later, 11 years later, meeting in Philadelphia in Independence Hall, this time, those founding fathers were going to amend the Articles of Confederation in response to the intolerable acts of King George closing of the Port of Boston, quartering soldiers. But rather than amend those articles, they developed a new constitution and gave us liberty unequaled since and lasting down to today. It was men like James Madison and Alexander Hamilton who authored the Federalist Papers and gained the support of the citizens to adopt that Constitution, which serves us so well. Three individual branches of government, heretofore unequaled on Earth, recognizing the role of the legislature to make law, the executive to enforce it, and the judicial branch to interpret it. And I'm reminded of Abe Lincoln, who stood on a battlefield in Gettysburg, gaunt and morose, fighting to protect our union. And you remember his address, 
four score and seven years ago. Our forefathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. But do you recall how he ended? He said, these men will not have died in vain, and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. My friends, we take the privilege of assembly today, the privilege of education in the electronic classroom of tomorrow as simply something we attend. But our forefathers brought forth this liberty to give us these opportunities with this creative way of educating students around our state, opening new pathways for those who might not otherwise have that opportunity. Folks, this is the reason why our borders are being breached. It's the reason why everyone wants to come to the United States to enjoy what we sometimes take for granted. We live in the greatest country in the world. So many in this audience are so proud of what you graduates have achieved. And you should be justly proud as well because we know the struggles you had. We know the late nights you had, the difficulty in persevering, and we commend you for being here today. You've made excellent choices. You should be so proud of where you are. And as you leave here today, your life will be filled with choices. Oh, I'm reminded the story about the old Catholic pastor who went fishing one afternoon, threw the line in the water, and suddenly heard a voice. The voice said, pick me up. He looked over and there was a frog on a lily pad. And as he picked up the frog, the frog said, if you kiss me, I'll turn into a beautiful woman and be your wife for the rest of your life. The priest put the frog in his pocket and buttoned it up. The frog said, maybe you didn't hear me. I could be a beautiful wife for you. Last all your life. And the priest said, well, you know, at my age, I'd rather have a talking frog. <laughs> Every graduate in this audience will have choices to make in a career path, in an educational endeavor in the future with respect to families and communities. We live in a changing world. Consider with me the storied development of communication that during revolutionary times we had Paul Revere waiting to determine if it would be one if by land or two if by sea as a flash from a lighthouse so they could carry the word around. And it wasn't until the early 1830s that Sam Morse gave us the Morse code and the telegraph came. And much later on, it was Alexander Graham Bell who uttered those words, Watson, come in here, and gave us a telephone communication. Fast forward with me until 1992, when the internet was made available to all of us, and in your lifetime, everyone has an iPhone. With instant communication, tweets and Twitters, and access to a wealth of information. Imagine the world you will witness in your lifetime 
if it has taken us all of that time to get up to 1992. You are the future. You are the hope of America. We are optimistic about all the enthusiasm you bring as you graduate this afternoon. My message for you is get into that field of endeavor that feels the best. And whether it's entertainment or whether it's race car driving or whether it's future education, you can change the paradigm. You know, commencement isn't the end of anything. We're not celebrating the end of your studies at ECOT. We're celebrating the beginning of the rest of your lives as you go on to make great choices in a great world, in a great country. Whether you as a graduate realize it or not, you are a role model for all those in your family and all those in your community because they know what you have accomplished. Collectively, they're proud of what you have done. You are true role models in your communities, and ECOT and I are justly proud of your achievements. It's the reason why so many have come today to support you and witness this ceremony. You are special people in our society. All seated here are witness to that. Yours is a generation filled with hope and optimism for all Americans. You will do well. You are a special class from a very special generation. May God bless you and favor you with health, wisdom, and success as you assume your rightful place in our society. I am especially grateful to ECOT for the great privilege of addressing you this afternoon, and I'm honored to serve as your justice on the Supreme Court of the State of Ohio. Thank you all very much.